A little girl born into a royal lineage. Just like any other girl, she was full of energy and had hope of a bright and joyful future ahead. But fate had a different plan for her, and the situations that followed later forced her to make compromises and sacrifices that eventually led the girl to become the last Hindu queen of Kashmir. She was Kota Rani of Kashmir, and this is her story. To begin with, it is important to make a mention of King Harsha, who ruled Kashmir in early 1100 AD. As per Kalhana, the army was divided into groups of hundred soldiers. Each group kept under the command of a Muslim officer. This was done to prevent revolt and ensure its loyalty to the king. Muslims gradually started organizing themselves as a force, only to emerge as an important distinct group. After the death of Harsha, they used their war fighting capabilities and defense qualities as an instrument to increase their influence in the army. It is their very strength which helped many rulers to retain power on tottering thrones. Because of one wrong step, an atmosphere of conflict and confrontation developed between professional and Muslim soldiers. New policy of liberalization came into existence to stop it, but it resulted in the cracks in coexistence. Traditional unity started crumbling, and the poison of religious conversion started spreading. The roots of Hinduism were getting severed from its civilization, with the inflow of foreign religious preachers with large-scale politico-social upheavals threatening the basic civilization structure of the valley. The need to keep the soul of Hinduism alive assumed significance, but history does not remember Kota Rani, the last queen of Kashmir. At this most momentous and intriguing time in Kashmir's history, Kota Rani is one of the most courageous, remarkable, and ultimately tragic personalities you would ever come across. A foreign invader from Tatar, better known to the history as Dalcha, is reported to have brought large-scale death and destruction to the people of Kashmir in 1319. He indulged in large-scale loot, arson, massacres. Sending shivers down the spine of the people, as barbarism unleashed by him was never seen by the people before. The ruling king Sahadeva got so terrified that he fled to Tibet, leaving his wife Kota Rani at the mercy of Dalcha. Terror-stricken people, on hearing about the disappearance of their king, fled to safe havens, reducing the valley to a ghost city. At this stage, three claimants appear on the scene: one, a scheming and clever Shamir. Was appointed as official in the palace by King Sahadeva himself, but for tactical reasons, he is reported to have withdrawn from the race, thinking probably his time was yet to come, and leaving the field open for another man. Second, Rinchan Shah, a prince from Ladakh, who had been granted political asylum along with his followers by King Sahadeva. He too had proved his credentials by helping the king to retrieve the situation from external aggression. Which had earned him considerable respect. Third was Ramachandra, the Prime Minister and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, who too was in hiding at the time of aggression by Dalcha. For some time, Ramachandra ruled Kashmir, and Rinchan helped him defending Kashmir from the marauding Dalcha forces. But when Dalcha eventually died in snowstorm, Rinchan killed Ramachandra to assume power. To earn local support, Rinchan appointed Ramanachandra, son of Ramachandra, as the administrator of Ladakh. And also proposed marriage to Kota Rani. Kota Rani's subsequent decisions reflect her burning desire and intentions clearly. She begins with Hinduizing the minds of foreign rulers by using marriage as an act of diplomacy. Kota Rani had to accept Rinchan's proposal. Rinchan also employed Shah Mir as a court official. Since Kashmir had only Hindu and Muslim population, and Rinchan was Buddhist, Rinchan wished to convert to Hinduism. But Pandit Devaswami rebuked him as Rinchan had killed Ramachandra. Shahme convinced Rinchan to convert to Islam, taking the new name Sadruddin Shah, and becoming the first Muslim ruler of Kashmir. He renamed Srinagar as Rinchanpura and built the first mosque in Kashmir. Rinchan or Sadruddin Shah ruled from 1320 to 1323. He was assassinated in 1323 by rebels. Sadruddin had a son Hyder with Kota Rani. Kota Rani did not want her Muslim son to become the ruler of Kashmir, so 
so after his death she married her brother in law Udyana Deva brother of Sahadeva even though Udyana Deva became the king Kota Rani practically governed Kashmir she was very brave shrewd and an able ruler Kota Rani had two sons Rinchan son was under the charge of Shah Mir and Udyana Deva's son was taught by Bhatta Bikshana her prime minister Kota Rani was grooming Udyana Deva's son to become the ruler after her When Mongol warrior Achala invaded Kashmir, Kota Rani took over the reins and appointed Bhatta Bikshana as her prime minister. She led the Kashmir army and eventually defeated Achala. Decision of Kota Rani to choose Bhatta Bikshana as her prime minister did not go well with Shamir. After the battle with Achala, there was a political turmoil in Kashmir as the Hindu court officials were elected to accept her as the ruler of Kashmir. The shrewd Shamir was waiting all this while for this opportunity to strike at the throne. Shamir pretended to be sick, and when Bhatta Bikshana, Kota Rani's prime minister, visited him to inquire about his health, Shamir jumped out of his bed and killed Bhatta Bikshana. Subsequently, Shamir led a large section of the army in revolt against Kota Rani. She could not handle this betrayal, and with the Hindu court leader refusing to help her, she had to concede defeat. After her defeat, Shamir proposed to marry her. While initially her survival instincts made her consider Shamir's offer a life full of upheavals and repeated betrayals, ultimately drained her spirit and made her realize the futility of the situation, and she chose to stab herself to death. According to the historian Jona Raja, she committed suicide and offered her intestines to Shamir as wedding gift. Shamir killed both her sons. Her death in 1339 paved way for the establishment of Shamir dynasty to rule the Kashmir. With the death of Kota Rani, history witnessed the end of an era. In her lived a very courageous and a diplomat par excellence of her times. She weathered every storm with poise and emerged stronger after every event. But misfortune never allowed her a peaceful life. It haunted her at every step. She had to fight anarchic conditions prevailing in the state at a time when foreign invasions and intrigues were common feature. At every stage, she succeeded in reassuring the people about her capabilities as a ruler. She has secured a place of prominence for herself in the history of Kashmir.